I want to let you guys know about one of my biggest time savers, and that is the change element tool. So for me, I will uh, use this tool to, instead of digitizing things twice, if I wanted a different type of element, um, I will just change from one thing to the, to the other. So if I have a walk, I can change it from a walk to a single line, or um, I'll also use it to add borders to things. So let's take a look at the change element tool and see how uh, it can speed things up for us. So a lot of um, designs that, that you may do, and I've got uh, the wrong tool up here for a second, so let me click back in and get back to my traditional uh, input, uh, sorry, complex fill traditional input method. Um, a lot of designs you'll do may have something that starts out a little bit like this. I have an oval, and I just used uh, <clears throat> a standard fill here. And with this, let's change my stitch angle to 60 because I, I like things to go at a slight angle just because it uh, doesn't line up with the stitches that I tend to put over the top of it. But I've got a large fill here and I might be sewing lettering over the top of it, whatever, but just that shape alone and, and you'll have badges and emblems and things like this that have just a shape with just a fill every now and then, the edge can look a little bit ragged, so how do I clean that up? One of the easiest ways to clean that up is to put a satin stitch around the edge. So well, I could digitize everything again using a single line, or I can use change element type to do that. So what I would do is select that element, and then I'm going to go to change element type, and I am changing from a fill, and then what do I want to change it to? Well, in this case, I want to change it to a single line center. And do I want to replace it? If I replace it, it will delete the fill and just have a single line center, or I can add it. And when I add it, now I have a single line center just like that. So now I have this piece sewing, and then this piece. Um, and, and with that, you can start to do some kind of fun things. I could uh, duplicate this piece and then change the color, and then take the piece underneath of it, go to my properties, and I could choose to do a single line left. I got that wrong. I could choose to do a single line right. There we go. And then I would increase this to maybe a 35 or a 40. And now I have an outline and an inline. Um, and I did that very, very quickly. I did it with duplicating something and doing change element types. So you can really start to speed things up. Um, other ways that this can come in really handy. If this was a jacket back size, so something that was pretty big, uh, 12 inches. Um, this is huge and it has almost, it's got 47,000 stitches in it. Um, I don't want to sew all of that, so I can use change element type to change it from a complex fill to an applique. So I can replace those stitches with fabric, and instead of adding, I'm just going to replace it. And now I have a huge piece of applique, and I have 4,000 stitches instead of 47,000 stitches. Um, so that's going to be super helpful and of course if you want to make it match you can change the color or do whatever you need to do for that. Um, change element type is something that I use very very frequently um, to do just this type of thing. In fact uh, change element type you can even use with lettering. So if I have a big M here and um, I'm using a true type font and normally I'm not a big fan of using true type fonts because, well, I mean, honestly, they weren't really meant for stitches and sometimes the stitches don't look so hot. Um, so if I was doing something maybe at this size, I could use change element type to change it from lettering to a complex fill and I could replace it. Now I have a complex fill and then I could use change element again and do a single line and I could add it. So now I have a complex fill with a border. So you've got a lot of options with that. Um, 
And so if I undo a couple of times, if it was big enough, you could even stretch this out a little, make it a little bit bigger, and use change element type to change it to an applique. And so that's really starting to speed things up. And of course, I'd want to go in and deal with my corners and, and whatnot there. So let's now nah, let's cap this. There we go. That's looking a lot better. Yeah, I like that. So now we've got these capped. These corners are looking nice. Um, and that's again just change element type with with the applique tool. Um, you, there are keyboard shortcuts. So if I uh, didn't want to go click on the tool and then click on what I wanted it to be, um, if I have the element selected, if I hold shift, I can go click on what I want it to be. So if I have a complex fill, hold shift and go click on single line, it will add a single line around it. If I held control, it would replace it. It would take out the fill and replace it. So um, shift and then click on what you want it to be, change element type, for add, control, and click on what you want it to be is uh, change element type, replace. So shift and control can be really handy keyboard shortcuts for this tool, but this tool on its own is a really handy shortcut for you guys and will save a lot of time digitizing and uh, can uh, save some stitches depending on what you do with it. So take a look at it and have some fun with it.